was kind of one of those kids that played with film, played with videos. I, uh, you know, with my friends, I would always make movies, do whatever I could. Um, it was just kind of fun. Actually, what I wanted to do was I wanted to, I wanted to design roller coasters. But instead, I thought that, well, something more reachable that I could still do kind of creative things is I could, I could edit. And I, I knew pretty early on that editing is what I wanted to do. Um, I just, I liked, I, it was hard for me always to come up with my own ideas, so I liked taking other people's ideas and working with them and bringing new, fresh light to them. I went to film school, but I wouldn't say film school is really the, film school was like the road that took me to editing. And I, one, uh, someone once told me that the best way you can learn is find every director in your class. Go cut their movies. So I did that. I didn't have to spend any of my own money. I didn't have to do any of my own projects. I basically could cut five films at the same time because I just found my classmates like, oh, do you need an editor? I'll cut your movie. Do you need an editor? I'll cut your movie. And so I did that during college to be able to get as much experience as I could. When I was young, when I first started working with videos, I, Avid was not accessible. I, I actually used Premiere very early on. I used, I used a tape to tape. It was very, very early on, I had my VCR connected to my camcorder. I would hit play on the VCR, it would go through the computer, record onto the, the camcorder, and then vice versa. Uh, you know, it would never work right, you'd, you'd, something would be off, and it was, a, it was an experience in linear editing, I guess, was at the time. The first film I ever worked on, uh, I worked on The Aviator, uh, and I, was, I, I started just an editorial in the visual effects department, I was a, a PA. I was just an editorial assistant. Um, it wasn't even really editorial, it was a visual effects assistant. I was installing computers, I was, it was just anything technical. And they needed extra help. They had hundreds of film scans they had to get done quickly for a temp uh, screening. And we had to do it quickly. And I had to learn it because they needed help. So I learned, you know, in hours, how to do a film scribe scan list in Avid. And that was my first, like, oh, okay, so this is what this is. And I learned how to do key code, learned what Labral was, and did full assembly lists using FilmScribe. And that was kind of my first delve into Avid, had to learn it. And so like, my del first delve was actually technical, I guess, instead of even being creative. Well, a filmmaking is certainly a collaborative process, and Avid does make that collaborative process much easier. You can have a cutting room with multiple editors, multiple assistants, producers, directors, whoever's going to actually use the Avid, and you can all work on it at the same time, and you can share projects, you can share bins, you can share sequences. One person can work on one thing while another person's working on another thing, and that's the only way to get a huge film done is to have things going at the same time. Uh, Avid will talk with Pro Tools, of course. Avid will talk with any other color correction tool. You have to send other uh, lists out in order to conform your film in a professional way. And so you need something like Avid in order to communicate those edits, to communicate your cut to sound and your cut to your DI. And in the old days when you, you know, conform on film, you need something that could read that information and be able to uh, accurately represent your edit. I, I, when I was doing it originally, I tried using Cinema Tools at the time, so it was way back in the original Final Cut days, and it just didn't do it the right way. It wouldn't understand the multitudes of formats. Um, I worked on some projects, this is back in film days, I worked on some projects that were four perf, some projects that were three perf, you know, eight millimeter, 16 millimeter, and Avid understood all of those because it was built to understand those tools, and it understood the counts. You couldn't really do that with anything else, and it really was the only choice. Traditionally, to become an editor, you start as an assistant, or you start as an apprentice, or you start as a PA, and you work your way up the ladder that way. I kind of took a different approach, which was unique, and it worked for me, but it, it was, I, I knew about visual effects. I learned visual effects very early on, so I started as a visual effects editor. Actually on Aviator I got the credit of visual effects editor in the end because I did so much of it on the film. And that was my way in and so I could always do this little extra bit of technical. So not only could I, I could edit in the Avid, I could also do my own compositing. I learned, I learned how to do simple compositing, I learned how to do more complex compositing. Then I learned how to actually finish shots. 
I, there were some shows before I was able to cut that I was a visual effects editor that I also did the final compositing on. The, the actual shots that ended up in the movie, I, I did myself. And coming at it from that side, I was able to kind of backdoor my way in. So I, I started as a visual effects editor, I tried to get into more previs editing. And I was very fortunate to have access to some of these cutting edge films that I would worked on that previs was a new thing, you know, this is not that old. And so I was around when it kind of started becoming a thing. And being able to approach it from a very technical side that, oh, I can do this, let me cut. You know, I can, I can, I can edit, and I can finish your visual effects. You don't have to have a supervisor. Like, you know, so I, I actually worked on it. One of the first films I did as an editor was a very small independent film, and one of the selling points was, okay, well, I can cut, but guess what? I can also do your visual effects. You don't need a visual effects editor because I'll do the lineups, and it made it an easier hire. You know, and a lot of people will say, oh, you know, you're a visual effects editor. Can you really cut? It doesn't. That, that doesn't work, but I think more and more that's kind of becoming a more traditional path. I like an assistant editor that can understand the technical aspects of what I'm of what I'm asking for because more and more of these films that I do tend to work on are very technically demanding. Uh, so having somebody that not only can I can have a shorthand with and I can just say, you know what, we need this, organize this way, you know, we need to go out, uh, we need an ALE here and, a, and you need to bring this in, make sure metadata is right, the time code, you know, having a technical verbiage with someone that's a shorthand with someone that they understand everything is just immediately, if they don't understand all of the technical parts of the Avid, then like, it can't work. And also somebody that can do uh, creative work. You know, you rely on an assistant to do a sound work and to help throw uh, dailies in a way that makes sense. So if they think like an editor, you need someone that actually is going to help you in that way. I certainly would have been able to learn on it sooner. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have had my first, I wouldn't have had to learn on the job. Uh, that was probably one of the hardest things was saying, okay, I need to get this film scribe list out, but I also have to learn how to use the software. Uh, being able to use it in film school would have been huge. Uh, it was very, when I went to school, that we had Avids, but there was like one, and you had to check out your time to use it. So I did gear more towards a prosumer approach. I was using Final Cut because that's what I had access to. And when I finally learned Avid, it was very different for me. Um, it's way different now. I mean, the new Avid tools are so much more user friendly. You know, the I, I started using Avid before Media Composer started restarted. You know, they restarted the version numbers, and it was it was definitely a learning curve. Uh, something like Media Composer first, it's it's much more of a easy way into that world. And yes, Avid has a real depth of usability, and and, and you can. I'm always learning new features still that, oh, I didn't know you could do it that way. And every editor has their own way of doing things. Every assistant has their own way of doing things. It's kind of fun to talk about, oh, you use Trim Tool for, okay, oh, I, use trim, I use Extend to do that. Um, and always talking about those things. But being able to play on it and learn originally and when you're starting out, it really sets you up to be able to use it professionally. Find like I did, find everyone that you know that's doing what you want to do and work with them. You know, just it's all about it's all about networking. It's all about communication. Uh, when if you're in school, find the directors. You know, if you are not in school and you're looking to start working, just uh, you know, uh, Google what what films are going on. You know, try just work your way in. Uh, you can start as a PA and get a copy of Avid and just go home at night and just play on it because you can now.